Uh, hello, my name is David Birch. I'm the director of Star Pass School of Navigation in Seattle. And I would like to explain the principal use of the octant. And I have actually used uh, instruments similar to this, uh, relied upon them, in fact, to cross the Pacific Ocean several times. To find latitude at sea, a navigator had to measure the peak height of the sun at noon, at midday, and that could be done with an instrument like this uh, called an octant. It is usually made out of an ebony, ebony frame, and it covered uh, one-eighth of a circle, and that's the reason it's called an octant. Uh, precise angle graduations are carved into ivory and then inlaid along this arc along the bottom. The, the ingenuity of the design was the double reflecting principle which allowed uh, navigators to measure a precise angle at the same time they're moving about in a seaway. Sunlight would come down and strike this mirror, then strike this mirror, and then reflect it back into the eye of the navigator. So the navigator, looking through this eyepiece, would be viewing directly to the horizon through this glass side, while at the same time seeing the sun uh, double reflected in the mirror that's right beside it. Uh, before each measurement was taken at sea, the first step would always be to double check the alignment of these two mirrors. Because when this, for the angle to be precise, when this arm reading is set here at exactly zero degrees and zero minutes, then these two mirrors should be precisely parallel to each other. To check that, the navigator would set this to zero degrees and zero minutes like that, and then look through this eyepiece to the horizon, and if the two mirrors were exactly parallel, the reflected view and the direct view would be one smooth continuous line. If one of the mirrors, if one of the mirrors was just very slightly tilted with the other, there would be a step there between those two levels. If the horizon is not in alignment in a smooth line, the navigator can adjust this knob here to bring them back into alignment and set the zero properly. To use the octant, the navigator would hold the instrument at eye level and view through this eyepiece and this glass, which is at the side of the mirror, through this glass straight to the horizon uh, in a direction that is directly below the sun. Not looking at the sun, but looking at the horizon below it. And then moves this arm forward and backward as needed until the sunlight, sun's image reflects from this mirror onto this mirror and back into the eye so that the sun's image can be viewed sitting right directly beside the direct view of the horizon. Once the sun and the horizon are both in view based on these coarse motion made back and forth like this, the navigator would reach around and lock the arm into that position with this screw at the back of the frame. Then the final adjustment would be made with this tangent screw along here, this one, which just has very imperceptible motions, but you can definitely see it when looking at the sun uh, next to the horizon, and then it's lined up exactly that way. After the bottom edge of the sun has been aligned precisely with the line of the visible horizon, there's one last check to make, and that is to be sure that we're measuring the perpendicular distance from the sun straight down to the horizon. That is, we want to be sure that we're not leaned over with the waves at some kind of angle like this. And the way that is tested is called rocking or rolling the octant or the instrument. And that motion is done like this. It takes very little motion, but I'm looking straight to the image and the horizon and making this rolling motion like this. And I want to be sure that the sun's lower limb, lower edge, does not dip below the horizon during that process. If it does dip below the horizon, then I have to adjust it back and do the process again. Uh, usually when taking the sun sights, the glare of the sun will be too bright to view directly as I've shown here just now. So normally, some one, two, or three of these index shades would be put into place like this to block 
uh, to reduce the glare of the sun. So these shades can be used as needed here in any combination. There's also a set of shades here, and these are used only when there's a bright glare on the horizon. And that can often, it's not, not always there, but when it is there, it can be bright enough to shut off the sight. After the alignment of the sun with the horizon and double checking on the rocking, the final height of the sun then is measured from this arc along here. The degrees part of the angle, the whole degrees part of the angle is read from the leading edge of this mark right here. And then the minutes part of the angle is interpolated from this pattern here, which is called a vernier scale. Uh, later developments of the instrument included a replacement of this simple eyepiece with a small telescope. And the telescope magnification allowed for a more precise alignment of the sun and the horizon. Another development is the addition of a small magnifying glass, which could be rotated in and out of this region by the vernier scale for reading those more easily. And then... Um, the, uh, the later development was to actually add a handle to the back, and the back of the instrument does not have any handles in the earlier ones, but the later ones actually build a separate handle like that. Once the angular height of the sun, the peak height at noon, was determined, then to find the latitude at sea took just a few minutes of uh, paperwork in modern times, and I suspect it did not take a lot longer uh, in the 18th century. All of the correction data and the sun's data are now and were then compiled in what is called a nautical almanac. And the accuracy using that data, the navigator could probably find his latitude to within a mile or so uh, in those days using this type of instrument. Uh, using the most modern sextant, the, the newer version of this and the latest data, the modern standards are about half a nautical mile precision for this type of celestial sight. And that should be compared to a handheld inexpensive GPS, which can do it in seconds for about 20 meters of accuracy.